Um, hello everyone. This is Bing Xie from uh, from Oak Ridge National Lab. I'm sorry, it's just jumpy. Um, today I'm gonna talk about our work on tuning the I/O ripe performance of HDF5 on Summit. Uh, we conduct this piece of research work in collaboration with researchers from Oak Ridge and Lawrence Berkeley Labs. So we target on, sorry, we target on the supercomputer Summit and its file system Alpine launched at OLCF. Summit is one of the fattest supercomputer in the world and its file system Alpine is deployed with GPFS file system. It provides 250 petabyte storage capacity with 2.5 terabyte per second IO bandwidth. So as you can imagine, it's a super powerful supercomputer with a very powerful storage systems. It supports the scientific applications across different domains who use CPUs and GPUs doing their computations and read write data frequently on the supercomputer IO subsystems. So many of the, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening here. Many of the applications choose to use IO libraries. HDF5 is one of these popular IO libraries. It is widely used in the HPC community because it provides highly flexible data format and it uses a hierarchical data structure for users it's easy to communicate to the underlying storage systems and also at the same time, very easy to extend the, the file format and content at different levels. The other pros and cons of HDF5 is users can improve their performance by tuning different IO parameters, but it requests a solid amount of knowledge about the underlying storage systems. So what we are facing is that the, the observation is that we found the HDF5 doesn't perform well on Summit, especially for the right performance. And uh, what we found is that the on other supercomputer systems, for example, like a typical uh, benchmark or the IO kernel VPIC, it's a plasma physics IO kernel. It performs similar, it delivers similar write performance to MPI and POSIX in write sharing, but on Summit, it, it is observable extremely low write performance. So we want to know what's happening there and how to fix the issue. So um, eventually, what we did is to we develop an IOR benchmarking template to mimic the VPIC behaviors and to deliver a controlled experiments to to study the read write performance of the IO benchmarks. We also use the Darshan DXT traces to jump into details of the IO write eternals to see the specific block performance. And eventually, we identified a performance issue, which is the mismatching at the data layout level on GPFS file system. And eventually, with the appropriate configuration on that, we obtained a hundred times write performance improvement in VPIC on Summit. So here is, sorry, here is the motivation image I'm showing here. In this four figures, we are um, showing the IOR performance, which we basically mimicking the VPIC IO behaviors. We are using the MPI ranks to generate write bursts with each rank writing out 256 megabyte bursts with 32 megabyte per block and all the MPI ranks write share a single file. And uh, 
the four figures each represent the aggregate bandwidth before file close till sorry before file open till file close the performance the horizontal line in each sub figure represent the achievable bandwidth which in most cases are mpi io uh, the achievable write bandwidth and uh, the red circles i circled out as you can see my mouse showed out are the hdf5 performance for hdf5 collective io and hdf5 independent so as you can see when you are using more mpi ranks more nodes the performance difference are bigger we see the performance differences up to two orders of magnitude so we confirm the problem first we find that the hdf5 does present lower much lower write performance on summit compared to mpi and POSIX. so if we want to locate the issue, several things we need to always keep in mind. First is the performance variability. As a, as a production supercomputer like Summit and its file system, Alpine, it is super busy all the time. So how to make the IOR benchmarking controlled all the time? Always have a standard running along with the HDF5 is the first thing we need to address. Second is very limited file system visibility to the end users. We are running the IOR benchmarks as any other regular user. We can collect the IO related data, but most of the information from the system side, we have no idea what it is. So how to do it? The third thing is that we know it is not about summit because MPI and POSIX can achieve reasonable write performance. So it is something on HDF5, but for a rich performance tuning space, how to get the lead or the direction to see the performance improvement opportunities is the third thing we need to keep in mind all the time. So what we did is first, it is highly variable, but statistically stable if we repeat it around the same experiment and always use, always building the IOR template to run HDF5 together with POSIX and MPI to make sure under each benchmarking execution, we have the standard output to compare with. Second, it is visible, limited visibility to the end users. But what we need to do is to break matters to open read, write, close, and then look at the details of each block performance by using the Darshan DXT logs. Third part is that we do need some expert knowledge to, to guide how to tune the specific performance issues within HDF5 or in the MPI Romeo hints. So eventually we use box Eventually, sorry, eventually we use the box plot to present to present the benchmarking result across different scales for different APIs and HDF5 configurations by using that um, a set of term, uh, methodology, we eventually located the issue. So first, this is the figure I showed before to motivate this issue and it confirmed that the end-to-end -end performance is poor, but by using IOR, we can first we split the per performance to open, read, write, and close. And as you can see in the four figures that I'm using the horizontal line to point it out the best open time across different APIs. As you can see, they're more or less the same. So we can we can confirm that the performance issue isn't come from file open side. So there's no trick there. Now we're jumping to the we're jumping to the close time and more or less they're the same. So it's nothing about close. Here is the problem started showing up. It's I don't know what's happened. Let me try to move it to another mode to see if it gets better. 
So when we are moving to the read write performance, as you can see that it shows up clearly, the MPIIO performance is here. It's peak median is always the peak for different APIs. And for across size, it's always the peak. And then for POSIX, sometimes a little bit off, but still much better compared to the HDF5 performance. So eventually, we located it's in the data transfer part. It's HDF5 losing its performance. And um, then, we look at different type of IO running by shifting the F-Sync from the data transformation function to the close. We still see the same performance as which suggested that for the write cache, even though we write, write cache the, the data in memory, we still see extremely low performance. Something wrong is there. And eventually, we we are we decided to tuning the right cache configurations inside of HDF5, and uh, here is what we are doing with different right cache configurations. So in HDF5, there are two dimensions to 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 play with the right cache configuration. One is to we defer the we, we defer HDF5 write uh, some of the metadata instead of talking to the metadata server. They are saving part of the file metadata as HDF5 metadata and store the data on the storage disks, which is first cached in the memory and then flushed to the disks synchronously in some configuration. In this one, we specifically let the HDF5, specific HDF running, keep that metadata information inside of memory, which in the experiment, we call it HDF5 plus defer memory cache. And um, at the same time, we also set the alignment value, which in default will be flexible, depends on how much HDF5 metadata you produce. In the configuration, we try, we give it a large big chunk to allow it to write from offset zero to 32 megabyte. In this IOR experiment, we call it HDF5 alignment setting with 32 megabyte. And uh, so as you can see, the X axis in each sub figure represent the different HDF5 configurations from left to right. We work on the ad additional default HDF5 configuration, and then we jump to the HDF5 with alignment value setting at 32 megabyte, or we simply let HDF5 defer the write cache flush till file close, or we combined the operation, the configurations on write cache defer plus alignment value setting on 32 megabyte. And then we compared the results to MPIO and POSIX. In this four sub figures, we report the result from two nodes to 128 nodes. And we, we report both write read performance in case we, we capture some of the performance issues with read. So as you can see that the original performance is more or less the same, nothing helps, but when you set the alignment value on, you see a performance jump up, which is comparable to the best performance happening, occurring with MPI IO. So it's more or less the same. The HJ and HDJ are more or less the same in two nodes. And you see the similar thing with eight nodes, 32 nodes, and 128 nodes. So we found that the, we did located the issue with right cache, and eventually that is the problem. And in this one, we highlighted the results and uh, the this is the end-to-end -end performance from file open to the end of file close. And we confirmed that 
both the alignment setting and the defer metadata flush can help. But the main performance gainer is the alignment setting. And uh, eventually we see more or less the same similar performance for the HDF5 with alignment setting with defer metadata flush, the, the performance is similar to this to MPI IO. And uh, we after we confirm the performance gaining with IOR, we moved back to the VPIC benchmark and we see and uh, in VPIC we are working on 256 nodes and 112 nodes, which in larger scale and with the uh, more ranks running on the single node as what the IO kernel does. And uh, we see a hundred times performance improvement for compared to the IOR where we see around 40%. So eventually it's even better. And also for the VPIC benchmark, we see that previously compared to the IOR results, where the deferred write cache doesn't show much performance benefit, but with the I VPIC benchmark, we see we also see a performance jump, which is more than I, which is thirty to forty percent of fifty jump with the uh, with the right cache defer turned on alone. So eventually we. Eventually, we, we concluded that we identified the performance issue for HDF5 on Summit, and uh, we are we we also tried uh, some other benchmarks on Summit, like the camera and C, also see performance improvement there. We are looking for more IOR, more flexible write patterns configurations to see if we if we can set the alignment value as default for HDF5 on Summit. And also, we are seeking the opportunity to, to conduct the similar experiments and the real application verification on other supercomputer file systems to see if we can obtain H better HDF5 performance there. So the further evaluation is in progress. And uh, um, for this piece of work, we want to thank the support from OLCF for using their supercomputer resources and the support from ECP project and the, the help and support from Lawrence Berkeley Lab with specific uh, DOE funding support. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll stop here. All right. Thank you, Bing. Uh, I'm sorry. For the jumping slide, it I kind of missed it up a little bit. <laughs> sorry for that. All right. So does oh. anybody have any questions to start with? Wait, I think I hear one. So um, I'll ask this start, one to start with, and that is um, VPIC is a TD domain, is that correct? Sorry? VPIC has a TD data domain so, uh, orientation. So it's a, a, an array of structs, basically. Is that correct? Um. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit lost. I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about the, the, the IO kernel I'm using, the data? Yes, so how is uh, the data organized? Is it like a 2D array? Um, the VPIC data, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Sorry. It's all right, I'll ask a different question then. Uh, sure. The um, the chunking setup um, where you say that you wanted to use 32 megabytes is that actually changing the file layout or is that just changing its stripe alignment? Um, 
it changed the stripe alignment. Okay. All right. Uh, Julian had a question. Julian, do you want to ask or you want me to? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was wondering from the methodology that you use, uh, how much would you reapply? What did you really learn from kind of exercise, right? Would you do it the same way? Would you change something? Oh, thank you for the question. So the first thing experience is that um, it's um, um, the, the supercomputer, the performance variability. I, I hope um, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge big issue when you are trying to benchmarking the result. How to make the result stable is the first thing um, that I learned from this piece of work. You need to have sufficient runs in the system, but at the same time, you don't want to waste too much precious IO resources in such kind of work. So um, for now, we are just uh, running 100, 200 repeated times to make sure we have sufficient data, but in the later, it must be some mathematical formula to have a theoretic guarantee we have data. Second thing is that we want to design controlled experiments. That's what I repeated several times. You always have um, a basic, a baseline to compare with. In this set of experiments, we have three. One is the original default HDF5 performance. The other two are MPIO and POSIX. We want to keep them all the time to make sure it's good. The third thing is that on for the HDF5, the sorry, I'm talking about the learning from this exercise is um I at the start when I working when I started working on this issue, I feel it's a huge big performance tuning space and it's no no place to start with and uh, and it it does request demand the expert knowledge to design to well design experiments and uh, to to look details to know the lead to tuning the performance so I, I would like to I would like to say if there's more um, automatic more um, pre-examined parameter tuning platform can be applied for HDF5 on each popular supercomputer and it can be some default dynamic parameter setting um, configurations or choices for users that would be better and that will make HDF HDF5 more powerful, and that is the next step I would like to prefer. Do I answer your question? Yes, thanks. I would agree what you said. <laughs> uh, I was just one, one additional question, if I may. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is, um, you know, in terms of you, you showed the performance number that you could achieve on 500 nodes, but yes. how does this compare to the theoretic performance? I mean, I know from IO 500 that, mm -hmm. you know, you can do about two terabyte a second. In that regard, mm -hmm. this 500 gigabytes, mm -hmm. well, it's just 25%, right? Sure, yeah. Um, I forgot about the hardware bandwidth limitations, but you raise a very good question. First, I think it is um, it is below the the definitely below the hardware bandwidth capacity of the uh, Alpine file system can provide with the number of the storage bandwidth resources they have. There are several reasons my in this first it's a very busy systems and we we are doing sufficient experiments to get a consistent phenomenon show show up but it's not sufficient to catch the best time or the ideal situation on summit or alpine that i could 
I would say that will be one reason. The second reason is the HDF5 also for MPI-IO, when I'm saying the achievable performance, I'm talking about a single shared file, which is not the best use of the bandwidth for the system, but it is convenient for the scientists for their next step. Um, it's just a choice of that. So I think this, these are the two major reasons that we didn't see the the ideal the the bandwidth capacity from the hardware the summit and LPAN can provide does this answer your question yep thanks sure mm -hmm. thank you we have any other questions I have one remark I need to make then, which is you mentioned that you want to have this control environment where you run the experiments, right? And I wonder, you know, if, I mean, I, I wish, of course, we all wish that this would be possible, but maybe um, what you already have done is the closest thing, to, to, so to speak, closest instance to something that is controlled. You had your notes exclusively. Yes. And you always had, you know, your shared storage. And maybe we have to live mm -hmm. with the fact that, you know, we have to do statistical analysis like you showed here nicely. And maybe you sure. know, uh, some more statistical tests to prove something is better or worse than something else. Mm -hmm. So maybe mm -hmm. it's not, I, I just put this as a discussion, you know, and throw this to you. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I feel like um, from this piece of work, I see the value as an IO researcher even though sometimes I feel it is uh, under um, underestimated by the HPC community, but we do have the, the domain knowledge is very important and we need to find a way to transparently let the scientists achieve good IO performance, but at the, time, at the same time, let them realize our value. That's the major takeaway from me in this piece of work. <laughs> 